Next we need to know how to find the equation of a plane. Um, so the first way is when we are given three points that lie on the plane. So it looks like this. Here's our plane and we are told three points there. Once we've got three of them we can make a plane. Just like if you were making a line you would need two points on the line. Okay now think about this um, origin point as well. We can describe the plane by uh, saying how to get onto it. So give a position vector for one of those points, so a uh, OA, and then from there be able to move in a direction along that plane, so either towards C or towards B or a combination of both. So this would be um, then moving from A, we would add a multiple of AB and a multiple of AC. Now that would help us to get to any point R, we can um, use OA to get us up onto the plane, and then any multiple of um, AB to move in our, the direction we need to get to that point R. So if we turn this into vector notation, looking like this, so how we would work out each one, then we get the following. And this is the equation of a plane. So here's an example, we're going to find the equation of the plane that goes through three points. So popping it into the uh, formula that we've just seen, we'll put a, the position vector of a um, can go in as our um, first bit there. Then we'll have lambda multiples of b minus a, so we're looking at b subtract a there. And then mu multiples of c minus a, so we'll subtract those two vectors. And that gives us the equation of that plane. Now if we want to write this in Cartesian form, so we can take that equation we've just done, we set it equal to x and then make a system of simultaneous equations there. So we've got those three simultaneous equations and we use them to eliminate the lambda and mu. So from equation 1 we get that mu equals y minus 1. Equation 3 we can then substitute that in, so that lambda is y minus z and then use that to substitute into equation number one. And there we've been able to get rid of both the lambda and the mu and have an equation that's all in x, y, z, so it's in Cartesian form. Okay, now the equation of the plane if we're given a perpendicular to the plane. So here's our plane, this time we're given this line that goes perpendicular through it. That's called the normal to the plane. So we'll use the notation of n for that vector. Now imagine we have a point on the plane R. Now anywhere on that plane is going to be um, at a right angle to that normal. So we have um, the following property. I've just used A to mark the point where the normal is going through the plane. Uh, we know that if they're perpendicular the scalar product will be zero. Now AR we can um, define that as being the vector R minus the vector A. That just comes from um, knowing that if we wanted to get to O, uh, get to R from O, we would do O A plus A R. So it's just a rearrangement of that. So we get the following. So following that through from that uh, scalar product, we get that um, the scalar product of R and N is equal to the scalar product of A and N. So let's put this into an example. We want to find the Cartesian equation of the plane through 1, 2, 3 with the normal of 4, 5, 6. You'll see this is really easy to do once you've got this, um, uh, b these bits of information in this equation. So we're using the, the scalar products uh, equal. Um, so R is any point on that plane, so we call it x, y, z. Our normal was 4, 5, 6, so we're doing the scalar product of that. We know that it's equal to a, which is the point we were given, and the scalar product of that with the normal. So then working through the left hand side, the scalar product would be 4x plus 5y plus 6z, and the right hand side will be 1 times 4 plus 2 times 5 plus 3 times 6. And then just tidying that up, we get the Cartesian equation for the plane, 4x plus 5y plus 6z um, equals 32, quite nice and easily.